Well, hello there, folks. How are you? It's lovely to see you again as usual and a very warm welcome back to What's For Tea and I hope that I find you all very well. And for tea tonight, we had this beautiful Italian ziti pasta and I've done this one in the slow cooker. I found this recipe online and I just had to give it a go and I knew a lot of you would like this as well. If you like lasagna or meat-based, you know, pasta dishes, then you're going to absolutely love this. And because it's done in the slow cooker, it's so, so easy to make. There are quite a few ingredients involved, but you might find that you've got quite a lot of these already. So this is everything that I'm using here but as usual all of these ingredients will be in the description box down below. So I've got some water, marinara, the ziti. If you can't find ziti pasta just use rigatoni or penne, something like that. Salt and pepper, ricotta cheese, cheddar and mozzarella. I've got some chopped tomatoes, Italian seasoning, bay leaves and onion, some passata, the sausage meat and some garlic as well. And that's everything that I'm going to be using. This was the marinara that I used here. I didn't have enough marinara so I'm going to top that up with my passata and this is the ziti here. I get both of these things from an online shop called Little Italy who I will link down below in the description box. This was my sausage meat here but don't be alarmed by the, the you know the sell-by date there. This has been in the freezer. So the first thing you want to do is chop up your onion finely, get over to your cooker and get some olive oil into your frying pan and then you want to start frying off your sausage meat. The recipe that I found actually called for Italian sausage. I didn't have any and I couldn't find any so I am using standard pork sausage meat and I'm going to add Italian seasoning to this just to give me the same kind of flavour. So all you have to do is fry this off, just break it up with your wooden spoon and it will crumble down eventually as it cooks. And once it's cooked about halfway, I am going to add in my onion. So I was quite happy with this and the texture and it's about halfway cooked. So I'm going to pop my onion in. I am using a red onion, but you can use whatever onion or shallots you prefer. I'm using a red onion because I have quite a lot of red onions there. So I'm trying to use up what I have. So you want to let this cook until your onion is translucent for about five or so minutes and then you'll be ready to move on. So I was quite happy with this. The onions are more or less fully cooked and the sausage meat by this point is more or less fully cooked as well. So I'm going to go over to the slow cooker. I am using a three and a half litre crock pot. I always get asked that so it's a three and a half litre crock pot. So pop your sausage meat and onion mixture straight into your slow cooker with the juice and the oil and anything else that's in your pan because there are going to be bags of flavour in there. So just move it around a wee bit to make sure it's nice and even on the bottom. Then we're going to start adding all of the other ingredients. So to this, I'm going to add my garlic. You can use fresh garlic if you prefer. Again, I didn't have any, so I'm using the garlic in a jar and I'm going to use two teaspoons. Give this a wee stir through just to make sure it's well mixed in to your meat. Then I'm going to get in with my marinara. Like I said, I didn't have enough. The recipe calls for 600 grams. So I topped this up with this passata. It's quite similar, not quite the same, but it will do for a recipe like this. So I'm going to use half marinara and half passata. And then I'm going to go in with my chopped tomatoes. These are just chopped tomatoes in tomato sauce. So in with those as well. Any brand you like, it doesn't matter. Give that a wee stir through just to make sure everything is nicely combined. Now you want a wee bit more water or liquid in here because you're going to put pasta in here later on. So that's going to soak all of your liquid up. So in with some water and I'm going to add the Italian seasoning as well. And then I'm going to add three bay leaves as well. I'm going to use dried bay leaves, but you can use whatever kind you have. And I'm also going to add some salt and pepper. The amount is completely up to you. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of each. So I've got my black pepper and I'm using sea salt. But again, whatever you've got, it really doesn't matter too much. You're just looking for, you know, the overall flavour to be the same. So grab your spoon again. You just want to give this a wee gentle move around. Make sure you don't break up your bay leaves because we are going to be removing those later on at the end of the cooking process. To make it nice and creamy, I am going to add this ricotta cheese. So just a few dollops 
of that in with your sauce and again give it a gentle stir around just to make sure it's all nicely combined and it's looking very pink at this point but it does look a wee bit more red at the end so i've just cleaned up my bowl a wee bit because i'm like that but you don't need to do that on with your lid and you want to cook this on high for three hours I've just been to the gym and come back and been out for a walk and came back and it's looking something like this. So this was me three hours later. You just want to give this a wee stir around and fish out those bay leaves because nobody wants to be chewing down on those. So I had three. Just remember how many you've put in. So just add your pasta directly into this sauce. And like I said, you might think your sauce is looking too liquidy, but that pasta is going to, you know, so soak up a lot of the moisture in this dish. So just make sure your pasta is fully submerged. Just push it down with the back of your spoon because you don't want it going dry and crispy on the top. Do make sure it's fully covered over. And the last thing we're going to do is add on the mozzarella on top or mozzarella depending on how you like to see it so pop your lid on and you want to give this about another half an hour just to let the pasta cook nicely and if your pasta is not cooked to your liking you can leave your lid on for a wee bit longer we like our pasta al dente or with a wee bit of bite still in it you know we don't like our pasta falling apart soft but that is down to personal preference but I was really happy with this and let me tell you the smell in this house and the way this tasted was absolutely beautiful highly recommend you give this one a go and you can at this stage add more mozzarella cheese in if you want this extra cheesy but I was happy with the cheese level on this one so I'm just going to pop this out into a bowl to show you what it looks like in the plate and we had some garlic bread on the side as well. They're actually wee garlic rolls. They're tiny wee bread rolls with garlic and cheese on them with some extra parmesan on the top and some black pepper. Like I said, really, really tasty. And if you don't eat meat, you know, you can add corn or a meat substitute and just make it in the same way. It'd be quite interesting to know actually how it comes out, but there are lots of other flavours going on there. So I reckon it would probably work. So thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you as usual to the supporters of the channel over on my Patreon page and to the channel members here on YouTube as well for you all for watching and leaving your lovely comments and for those that share the videos as well. And I'm going to go off now and wish you a wonderful rest of your day and I'll catch you off as soon. Back here on What's For Tea. Take care. Bye now.